Christopher Rouse is one of the most uh, uh, important composers uh, on the scene right now. He's a composer I've admired for, for many years. Uh, he's won just about every award one can win, including the Pulitzer and including Grammys. And he's been championed by uh, uh, musicians like Yo-Yo Ma, for whom he wrote a cello concerto, um, Don Upshaw, Esapek Salonen, uh, as well as, as championed his music very much. This is the, the biggest, most ambitious work that, uh, that Christopher Rouse has ever composed, and uh, it's a requiem. It's, it takes the, the liturgy from the, from the Catholic Requiem Mass, but just as, as Benjamin Britten did in the War Requiem, it also uses poetry from a, uh, in this case, from a wide variety of sources. The piece begins with this poem of Seamus um, and it begins with the baritone soloist a cappella, uh, the entire poem, and uh, Christopher Rouse sets it out, and I'll demonstrate a little bit as, as, uh, as much as I'm vocally able to. Uh, he sets it almost like plain chant, almost like Gregorian chant. So the piece starts uh, with this very simple, very direct quality. Um, after this poem, then the chorus comes in and sings the, the requiem text, the liturgical text, uh, in a, in a overwhelmingly beautiful and powerful motet that goes on, I, I would imagine, for about seven or eight minutes. So it's, it's about you know, 10 to 12 minutes into the piece before we even hear the orchestra for the first time. Uh, and the piece is, I'll talk through it a bit, the piece also ends a cappella as well, so the, the chorus is very much front and center through the entire experience. Anyways, this is, I, I can't sing by any means this whole poem because I, I couldn't get through it without crying. Uh, but just, uh, this, is, this is how it begins. I sat all morning in the college sick bay, counting bells and nailing classes to a close. At two o'clock my neighbors drove me home. In the porch I met my father crying. He had always taken funerals in his stride. And Big Jim Evans saying, it was a hard blow. And that's basically it. Towards the end of the section, in the liturgy, we get to the Kyrie eleison, Lord have mercy. And at that point, the the texture has built up quite a bit through the course of it, and then it becomes very simple again and again. Starting with the sopranos, we have this kind of buildup of voices that actually descends lower and lower. So it starts, and then the altos and tenors. suspended symbol and we have this enormous crescendo of, of eventually all six percussionists plus timpani uh, in this enormous buildup into the dies irae, the, the day of wrath. About a quarter of the way through the piece we get to the text uh, Rex Tremende, um, uh, uh, King of Majesty, and uh, this, is, this is text from Mozart to Berlioz to, um, to, to Verdi has always called for 
uh, uh, brass and a big choral statement and uh, uh, just music of kind of massive quality illustrating this. And, and Rouse is no different. Uh, this is actually the first time that the full brass section comes in. It's four trumpets, four horns, uh, four trombones, and tuba, all on one note. Uh, uh, six, <laughs> with six Fs. Uh, 14C, C, 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 C. Uh, I'm not sure that it's necessarily louder than fortissimo, which is, in theory, the, as loud as you can get, but it's, it's kind of like in spinal tap. It goes up to it's kind of like... But anyways, so the entire brass section comes in on this, on this one note, which then they repeats into like a tattoo. Finishes with the Amen a cappella, and that's how the piece ends. So it, it, it sounds something like this. Here's the choir in this, this oscillating <laughs> domine.